Welcome everyone to episode 6 of the Rank Up series. Now, we finally have made it to Grand Champ, and this is where I'll go a little bit more in depth about certain things like rotation, positioning, and everyone's favorite thing, mechanics. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. What's up everyone, welcome to the replay portion of the video, and probably the most important section of the video. And before we get into into this, I do want to say if you are enjoying the series, Please do let me know down in the comments. I can switch it up and set replays, do something else if you really want to. And also, I could do this in ones, not really threes. I'm not the best at threes, so I can't give you anything really there. But if you want it in ones, I can do that too. But yeah. We're, as I said in the intro, hopefully, uh, we're in Grand Champ. And that means less obvious mistakes like the last few videos. And more on the... Uh, more on the smaller details, which, you know, I always suck at, so let's let's see, <laughs> right? But going for back goose here, this isn't bad, and this is where I'll get into more, like, uh, game sense, like, awareness, like, thoughts, ideologies, whatever you want to call it, ideals, whatever it is, about more advanced things in the game besides hippo hard because that's not the best this year is very good though teammate takes it high gets it past one the other is awkward in net we realize that and we go and grab up our first goal which is very good very good very good on our guy here and we go for this corner i've said this in our past videos we need to cheat on kickoffs here it doesn't matter if it happens every single Every single time that the ball gets past us or the ball does something, it's an opportunity to have possession of the ball. And that is the main thing, main proponent that, I don't know if the word is proponent, but the main thing that gets us higher ranked is this possession. If you hold possession game, it's harder for your opponents to, you know, get possession and score, right? But if they're on the back foot the whole time, then they can't get opportunities like this. This is a great double tap. And it's given to us by the teammates turning, or the, not the teammates, the opponents turning over possession. As we see here, goes for a flip reset, right? I'm not scared of this flip reset because look where it is on the field. It is so far away. He has to get the most powerful shot on that, and there's two people in that. Quiet here can jump up to save this, and, you know, before our boost here, we're sitting about, like, right here. So all we have to do is double jump as well. And pretty much everything is saved. And we're on high boost. So, this flip reset here, like, look how scary this is. Look how far away you are from the net. Like, right, you're center. This is good. And also, when you're attacking, you want to try to be as center as possible. So, it gives you better angles on the goal instead of limited. If you're to the side here, look how little of the net you have a shot on. Same thing with this side. You technically do have all of the net, but the angle is skewed and doesn't allow for easier shots, unlike the when you're facing the net. So, double jump here. Nice job lining it up. Fortunately, the defender doesn't know how to defend that exact shot, and we get a goal. It's all right, though. And again, as I've said in my own Rhodes SSL series, which you can watch if you're interested in watching me actually play, if you're new here, also thank you. Uh, if you're new, I really appreciate it. Even just watching for two seconds. But, yeah. You can you can watch me play and kind of go over the same stuff just in-game. Real, real game situations. Not that this isn't real game, but... You know. Less pause and go, stop and go thing. So, everything until this point is fine, right? We're the one going for the kickoff. It's on us to get a solid kickoff. It's not the best, but it it's alright. Not the best, but it's alright. And the best way here is to grab the 12 pad. Like, peak kickoff, you grab the 12 pad. And then you beat this guy to the boost here. That's it. Peak kickoff, right? Or if your second man plays close. And, you know, I hopefully will put up a replay here on screen of this exact kickoff happening. So you can see what the better play is.
but after this it just kind of falls apart right we're watching right if i'm in their seat right now i'm watching mr non here i don't know his name what is his name uh let's call him let's call him oj oj here is trying to shoot the ball and our teammates not going to make the most our teammates not in the most optimal position so what we can do here is we can watch where oj is or like his car is reference towards the ball right he's on the left side of the ball from our perspective here so he's probably going to right this doesn't happen all the time but he's most likely going to shoot it to the right side of the net because he has that hook angle so what does he do he 50s it so he doesn't go for the shot immediately but our flip here if you're watching our guy here we're flipping so we have no way of canceling our, our momentum or stopping where we're headed to right so in this situation what you should probably aim for is grab that pad good we keep our 12 boost here we don't use it we keep our 12 boost and we look to see where our teammate's shouting from and we look to see what oj here or the opponent is doing let's just drop okay so if we were on the ground here if we weren't mid flip we would be able to grab this pad and play whatever happens next right because their second, the blue second, is really close on the ball. So we need to be ready for what the second guy does. Not only the first guy, OJ here, but we need to look at what Soul is doing here. But we're mid-flip and we're continuing our momentum forward. So now we have to completely turn around here for this ball. So that's what we do here. While if we're in the right position or we're ready for the play, we have this pad here. We have 24 now or roughly 20-ish. And we can double jump and clear this ball or we can just glide along here a little bit because look at this this ball is coming down to us and we can somehow magically hit this down the middle and get a goal because look he's boosting towards us which means he has to kind of turn this way and boost that way just to catch up to the ball so instead of flipping and then getting into a spot where we can't make the save we can make the save and possibly get a goal out of it too. transition offense We're seeing not bad, not bad kickoff. And again, as I bring up in uh, the other videos, we need to have our camera ball cam on. Just for information, right? It it's so important when you're taking away information that you can easily have. It kind of stunts. It can stunt your like plays and like locks you into certain things that you do. Think of it that way, at least. This turn is not the best, right? Everything here, good idea, going for the bump. We do get the bump, Timmy can go for the ball now. But we're playing this a little too, a little too close for my, for my liking. Since he's obviously not passing to us right away, we can then boost, grab, boost to this boost, so that there's even more of a reason to grab this boost, even though there already is, because if you take the boost from the last man back, and they have to use boost to get up to the ball here. Then, you know, the whatever boost they use here is what they have less of, right? So let's say they use 30 boost. They have 70. They double jump. Or fast aerial double jump, whatever. They have 70 boost. They use 30. That's 30 less boost. And then they can't get that 30 back. So we can grab this boost. And then we can turn around into the play here. Or if it 50s this way, we can turn around this way and hit the ball either into the wall take control of it go up up off the wall whatever your mechanics allow you to do and this is also where as i said hopefully in the intro where we start to actually use our mechanics that we have unlike the flipper set earlier which gave the team nothing benefited the team nothing just gave away possession that's a bad use of mechanics and bad use this right here as well, like everything here, perfectly fine. The challenge, you're waiting for your teammate to spawn back because you got demoed. You're taking out time here. This is fine. Like the idea of this is fine, but we just maybe need to be a little bit further back. And now we see our teammate here, right? I may be asking a little too much, like reactionary, like speed wise. But we see our teammate here and then we have to rush back, right? Because our teammate touch doesn't touch the ball. 
a little more control off the side wall here. Like, you can time it to where if I can go 50, it'll make a little bit more sense. So what you do, instead of driving wide, you kind of are a little bit more more in line here because then the ball is just going to... Ball is pretty much landing here, so if you're right here, all you have to do is drive and boost a little bit. And if you want to completely bang it, you can just keep on going uh, supersonic and boom, you clear it. Or you go a little bit faster and wait for the ball to get to you and you can catch it and either bring it up the wall, bring it down the wall. Many options. But instead, we take a rushed version of it. Like we panic, we're like, oh, actually, not panic, but we rush into a decision we don't need to make. Because we have that little bit of extra time, right? The ball has to come down at one point. And we just got to figure out where it's going to land, right? So if we if it lands on the wall here, that's fine, right? We just got to be ready for either the bounce, a pinch, or a control touch. And it would have been a lot better because this way we just give the ball back to the opponents, right? Good challenge on it immediately, trying to get it back. We don't need to do this. If I'm looking at this right, our teammate had, teammate had an open net, I believe. Yeah, this is going in. So instead of going for i don't know if he's going for the bump it looks like he's going for the doink so instead of good here we take our ball cam off here this is where it's really important right soul can't challenge this ball because he landed awkwardly and that means that there's only one person back and for us luckily we get to see that he's a little bit low boost but we don't know this at this point we're too focused on the redirect if we get the demo here it's 3-1 because, guess what? There's no one in that. <laughs> and the ball is on target. Yet again, boost isn't going to move. The boosts don't move. So we can line ourselves up with the corner. Like, right... Unfortunately, dash, that's all it is. Right here, we line ourselves up. I guess that's fine. It's just a little, just a little slow. That's all. Good job getting on the ball. Like... That's the difference with higher level stuff is that we're on the ball and we're trying to get into the play, getting involved in the play. And that's what we're doing here, right? This is a good read of the play, right? It's going to the middle, so you go to the middle. Your only next thing is what is the opponent going to do? And then try to either guess where the ball is going and place yourself there or just wait and see what happens. And we kind of do a little bit of both. We wait and see, like, oh, maybe he misses, so we go forward. But then he pops up the ball to the middle here. We get an unfortunate touch, but it doesn't really matter because the person was back wall, right? We just kind of want to keep it on the offensive, which he does pretty decently at, I'd say. Getting involved in the play here. It's good. It's good that we're going this direction, right? We're thinking that the ball is going to go this way. We can wait here a little bit. We don't have to jump instantly because it makes us awkward and only daniel and xan are pulling off that goal there i'm sorry to say <laughs> not bad good beat on the ball and before anyone asks i forgot to say this i don't know what mmr range this is at this could be like Almost GC2, and then this could be like barely GC1, so I have no clue. I'm guessing it's like Div 2 ish, which is like 1500, roughly around there, but I'm not sure. It does give me high 1400 vibes, that's all I'm gonna say. So, everything here is pretty decent, right? Unfortunate touch, but the idea was there, right? We just can't... It's like knowing what to do, but not physically being able to do it, right? That's all that play was. So I can't knock them for that. It's just we get a better touch, we have a better play. That's all it is. And ev everyone can work on their uh, first touches. Not just this guy. Not just the people I've reviewed. Everyone can work on their first touches. This is a good turn. I like this turn. The main thing here is the touch, right? Defenders on this, like, right away. So good on the defender. 
we can kind of just sit this one like sit this one out if that makes sense and like kind of turn into like continue driving because this guy just got the hundred it is fair to jump and continue the play i'm just like saying other options that you can do good turn here a little bit of surprise go over the bump good this is good awareness plays pretty standard in my book and this this is where people with a little less like awareness and game sense than this guy will unless it's right unless it's performed perfectly on the offense like they get the demo here then it's unsavable but if they're doing something like this where one guy's ahead and not really look, paying attention to what the guy on the ball is doing and his situation right if we're in this spot here Right, I see my teammate here. I'm looking at his boost the whole time. And I see he has no boost. And just in this split frame, right? We see... Because blue team can see each other's uh, boost meter, right? And we also see that quiet is coming up behind our teammate here. So if I'm this guy, I'm pushing up a little bit closer. Just to make sure that my teammate has secure ball possession, whatever. And then I'm going for it. As soon as I know he has possession and won't be able to get demoed in time, then I go for the demo. Because if I just go for the demo now and teammate can't have possession of it or it gets demoed, that's a counterattack waiting to happen. But good job getting back on the ball. Good defense here. Good awareness. And this is where we start a counterattack, right? It's a good idea trying to get it to the middle. I do touch it here. I don't know why it didn't count server side this is where we do give a lot of like field uh field possession away and it's always good like in games like siege valorant games like that cs it's always good to have map like presence and map like control that's what's called map control and in this this exact like thing look at how much field they have to work with they have pretty much the whole entire field and it only gets scary like halfway through because this guy is running up on the last guy right and the last guy has no boost this is the only like scary part for the blue team the reason why this is bad is because it's pretty much almost in the net and we're finally getting a defender on this so to kind of stop this counterattack from fully happening is being back on the play, right? Grabbing, grabbing this pad, this pad, trying to cut off the play, right? It does lead you right into them. But as I said, like if the second guy, like, so what if it goes over you earlier? That just means like, hey, maybe you couldn't be there for that. But it could also cut off the play, right? Getting the flick here from Soul. Good control, right? Or at least good enough control. He does get the flick. And since he does flick this, he gives up possession. And let's say you're like right here and the ball goes up. This guy doesn't know the ball is up. So you could just jump and get out of the way and get possession of the ball and maybe lead it to a counterattack if you hit it this way and it doesn't bounce. It kind of rolls a little, little pop off the wall. You can get a shot on that. And this is the only guy that you would have to worry about because he could turn into you. We kind of want to keep map presence. That's all I'm trying to say here. You know, different ways of defending this, but we do defend it again. And yet again, it works in our favor. Yet again, OJ here not being able to defend the, the backboard, the, the low wall crossbar, if you will. It's a hard spot to defend, but after a little while, it gets a little bit easier to read. This only repetition, right? We do hear the other guy up. Good reason to jump. We're also watching the pass play. We're cutting off the pass. Good idea for the mid pass here. And this is what I mean, right? If you're bumped earlier on, we still have that presence, right? We're giving away map presence here. I don't know why blue can't score this, but they don't, right? You can see it at the bottom bar if you don't believe. <laughs> but... We're giving up a lot of ball and our teammates not on it. And this is where, right, no one in this lobby is queued up, so there's no comms or anything, really. We're just watching the... Right now, I believe we're watching the ball, and we're not watching our teammate or the players. 
and it kind of really shows because Soul here doesn't have a play. Like he quite literally doesn't have a play. He's just jumping at the ball. And us going but not going actually confuses our teammate and almost almost gets us scored on, right? Luckily teammate locks in for a second and you know puts up the brick wall and doesn't let it happen. Almost a counterattack, you know, open nets happen. You see me on the streams, you see me in videos, I miss those. That's an easy miss right there. Yet again, the camera off. The boost isn't going to go anywhere. And if you see this play and you're closer to the field, closer to the ball, you might have been able to beat that guy. But you could cut this and score, right? If you're more aware of like what's happening, essentially stop turning your camera off when you're trying to rotate back. The boost isn't going to move. Like we flip here and we still, we still don't have it on. Like even mid flip. We only turn it on when we're picking it up and oh wait what if the ball was going in our net instead of like rolling in the middle of the field almost or if this was rolling in our net and we had no clue because the camera was off that's all i'm trying to say throughout this whole entire series you'll see what i mean maybe when we get to gc2 because <laughs> that's going to be the end of the series because yeah I don't know what was happening here. Maybe a poor read of the play because this is quite an easy save if we're not panicking. Right? Good turn onto the play. Maybe we just couldn't beat the ball. Bad flip. Anything of the sort. Right? That's the first obvious, obvious mistake. Right? If there has been one before, I've probably forgotten it. Or watching our teammate here. He's still going up, right? He should rotate out. In my opinion, he should rotate out. But, you know. If you don't have to rotate out, you don't have to. I just, you know, off kickoff. And no boost. Right? It's pretty easy for you to rotate out and let your teammate come in. Especially when, you know, blue team both have possession. Like, and you just hit the ball away. I think it's easier to rotate out then. Like, you hit the ball up, you rotate out, let your teammate go. Instead of no boost continuing when, you know, if they counterattack like this, you're of no help. This is pretty decent positioning. We're getting ahead of the play, right? This is partially of, like, just watching the ball. Partially of, like, not... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. You're just not watching your teammates, right? If we're watching like the actual teammates opponents we know that there's no play here that our teammate can make that can pass this ball middle only way ever that this ball is getting middle is if the opponent misses the ball multiple times and it rolls into the middle like and that's not realistic at this rank <laughs> i'm gonna be honest may happen but it's not realistic so instead of being middle where was it right here we cut in a little bit so we can actually see what's going on in the play. We realize, oh, that guy's not going, our teammate's not going to be able to hit the ball and he's kind of just sitting there. He actually rotates into the field. So guess what we can do? We can go over here or we can wait back here and wait for the ball to get to us, right? We're positioning back here and then boom, we get the clear because OJ's not going to do much with this. He's going to try and pass it mid. So we watch the mid pass. Soul's there. We could jump here because our teammate's behind us so we can get there. Or so he can get there. Big 50 and we miss. Happens, right? Happens to everyone. If we want to play it safe, right? We don't know where this bounce is headed. We can kind of realize it right here. We don't know how power or right here. We realize that it's bouncing off the side ball. We don't know which side wall it is, right? This is the this is the difficult part I have with reading the game and plays is just this corner in general because it hits like something like this. It could bounce like in, it could bounce out, or for some reason for me, it can bounce in or like all the way back here. I don't know what it is, but we don't read this in time, right? We're not up in time, so... We extend ourselves 
a little too far and we just mess up, right? Our teammate can't cover us because he challenged and he's in the net now. He's recovering. So we either need to play it safe, right? We're in clutch time. We're in... We cannot throw. We cannot get scored on. But because we missed the ball, because we're not locked in, we're not in clutch mode, it... We get scored on, right? We don't read the play in time. I don't know what the play call there was, but I don't, I don't know. Good challenge on the ball, good pressure. A good demo attempt, right? Ball's up, zero seconds, doesn't matter what you do. In a sense, right? It matters, but... Very little in the corner. We realize that teammate doesn't grab this boost, so we can go and grab this boost. Keep their pressure up. Good-ish reading on the play. I say ish because we kind of turn back mid again and then we go wide here for some reason this is a, this is something that we can all work on is defend or we're just defending the wall and we're giving up the middle i recognize it in my own gameplay when i just go to the side here because you're giving up oh look at this look at the car here we have to we are giving us we are giving us we have only one thing here to do and this is challenge this is the only option we're giving ourselves because we can't go this way if the ball goes that way really fast we can't catch up to it and if he catches it in the middle we're forced to completely divert our car and go this way right and the ball pops up we have to be ready for that so the ball pops up we can't do anything they grab the boost so we don't have the boost and now we have to go for a demo right good force off the play but if you eliminate the middle then you force them to the side right and you can't you can't score from the sidewall right as long as there's someone back and you got your teammate back you can't score from the sidewall especially from this far, that far back not really possible in a like game scenario don't know why we did that teammate was ready for that and we almost get scored on because of it but good read on the play there for it not going in, right? I'm sure a lot of you would have just like jumped at this and got a bad touch, but because we read the bounce, we realized that it wasn't in, we gave ourselves the opportunity to score. Off the back wall, we score this one, and it's a GG. Overtime GG, 42 seconds. Now, main thing, right? Main thing, as always, I'm going to say it every video if I get the chance. Keep your camera on. Your ball cam. So much informa information to give you, man. So much. And it can dictate plays, right? If you realize, I do have enough time to go for this boost instead of, I just want the boost. And I'm going to get it, even though it's a worse play, right? Big shiny boost. Or... You can rotate out like the earlier play 12 24 36 like these types of these types of rotations right the i forgot what i called this but like the curve of the field boom you have what 60 boost almost more more than needed more than needed than this right going back to this boost and then turning then realizing you can grab like any pet there's so many options we don't always need the corner boost we don't always need the mid boost if you're good enough at the game which a lot of you are right a lot of you are better than you realize we just hold ourselves back because we're like oh i need the mid boost oh i need the big boost right if we realize that oh wait i can dribble with zero boost the options are endless right and just because you have less than eight 80 boost not 8 80 boost you can't dribble is kind of shocking in in 2024 in my in my my little humble opinion unless quite literally you are new to dribbling or new to the game if you've been playing the game long enough you should be able to understand how to dribble with zero boost might just be me but you should be able to understand how to do it and take that opportunity opportunity to learn it if you don't it doesn't take that much time i don't think 
It's been a while, but yeah. Main thing for this person is though to watch <laughs> watch what we do when we do it, if that makes sense. Because it's like the main thing for everyone, right? Watch what you do when you do it. Like over here, you're just defending like the wall. You give them the wall. It's not always the best example, but for this certain situation, you can give them the wall because you're not giving up the net. You can always drive up the wall. You can't always fly in the air, right? If they take this to the wall, they dribble it up the wall. While you're there, beat it or cancel it out or force something like force him to go high. Maybe he hits it too hard, hits it off the ceiling. Your teammates start to collect it. Anything. Your job, especially as first man here, because... Uh, this player likes to play first man, I've realized. Just keep force, and they did it well most of the time, was force the opponents to give up the ball. And they did that quite well. So their first man was great. Second man, not so much. But, you know, we everyone always has a weaker side to their gameplay, right? Luckily, we place it. It's a goal. But yeah. I hope you guys did learn something. Be ready for the final episode uh, next video. We're going to end at GC2 here because I don't think I could coach GC3 or SSL. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys did learn something. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to uh, answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.